Well, it's better to say we got off to a great start to the season around yesterday's episode of the Leipzig Loco here with Lokomotiv Leipzig. Today we look to hold on and make sure that we make our way through to the league phase of the Conference League and also off the back of deadline day, which to be fair, I don't think we're going to do much on, having already done quite a bit of transfer business. We play our first derby this season at home against RB Leipzig. <laughs> Episode 73 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Das FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we look to make sure we hold on to our 3-0 lead from yesterday's episode in the second leg of the fourth qualifying round as we take on CFR Cluj. And off the back of that as well as transfer deadline day, albeit a bit of transfer stuff to cover off before that Cluj game, we take on RB Leipzig in our first derby of the season. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but before we actually recap the result from the one game that we've played since yesterday's episode which if you missed I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we took on Gladbach in our season opener in the Bundesliga and also played that first leg of this fourth qualifying round in the Conference League against CFR Cluj. I did forget to cover off a little bit of transfer business before the start of the season and we've also done a little bit more since then. To be fair, most of it has been loans out as well as one sale. If we're going to look at what we have done, you look there on the right hand side first, you can see we did end up loaning out a few players once I realized some of those extra signs that we did make late in the window did mean they were unlikely to get too much football in this upcoming season. First off, Carl Henson, we did loan him out one of our new signings here from Leeds United for £900,000 in the end because Tom Gale needed to be registered for the Champions League and Hurtado was a better option than him. We've loaned him out to Union Berlin down in the two Bundesliga. So Carl Henson, he is no longer at the club for the rest of the season. The same applies for one of our right backs in Joshua Polini. He has gone over to Rayo Vallecano, and as well as that, more recently, Miguel Chaiwa has gone to Banak Estrava on loan. Of course, that's quite a similar situation to that one with Henson, with Racine Bullock being needed for the Conference League, being homegrown nation, and as well as that, Yuri Bas as an extra left back. We've also decided to loan him out from our second team. So quite a few loans out there just to try and help us in terms of our finances for this upcoming season. Also, we actually did a sale as well. And that was of Yakuba Sloy, the striker who got a lot of goals in the season, which did see us go up to the Bundesliga. He has gone these days to 1860 Munich. These guys are down in the free league. We sold him for £575,000. Probably could have got a bit more for him, but he wasn't really going to feature these days. He was down to being a third or fourth choice striker. And we do have quite a few options in our first team in that position now, albeit with that sale of Yakubis of the way, it did feel like maybe if we were going to keep Mustis as an out and out right winger, might not be the worst idea to try and find a good young promising striker, even though we've had a few of those through our youth intakes in recent years. And we did find one. I actually would have signed this guy earlier if he was interested at the time. He became interested quite late. In the transfer window, we have signed Carlos Pimentel out of America to Cali in Colombia. So another signing for us out of Colombia, to be fair. That is a place which does produce some quite cheap, good young players. He joins us up front for a fee of around £375,000. To be fair, it is going to rise in installments quite significantly up to around £5 million. But he is a good young striker, especially as a pressing forward. As I said, might have signed him earlier if he was interested a bit earlier in the transfer window, but he's done a decent job in a couple of seasons for America to Cali, and hopefully if we need to call upon him, if we get injuries up front, it does mean we can leave Mastis out on that right-hand side and see what the 18-year-old does have to offer, but that's probably our last signing of this transfer window, just wanted that little bit of extra depth up front for the domestic competitions, and this is where our transfer budget does now look like, just under £200,000 and not too much in the wage budget either, but yet another new player here at Locomotive Leipzig. And I think that's about all we're going to do transfer-wise for this window. We'll come back with any stuff that does happen on deadline day off the back 
of the second leg of this Cluj game, but I don't think much will happen with the state of that transfer budget and the fact we've already bought in quite a lot of players in this transfer window. But we have played one game in the Bundesliga off the back of yesterday's episode. It was against a team who, to be fair, we don't have the greatest record against from our days down in the two Bundesliga, and that is Fortuna Dusseldorf. But to be fair, this was actually not a bad result, a one all draw. For some reason, it hasn't popped up in the match recap, but there was actually a save penalty from Ivisic at the five-minute mark after Camillo did give away a foul, but thankfully, off the back of that, keeping it nil all, we went down the other end with our first shot, really, and Matty White put that one away, and we did have a 1-0 lead nice and early, unfortunately, just past the half-hour mark. Good pressure here for Fortuna, Dutzdorf, and Dardai just sneaks that one through Ivisic. As you can tell by those stats, they were certainly on the front foot. But we escaped this one with a one all draw. The way that we played in this game, I'll take that result. We did not play well at all, but thankfully still escape with a point. We'll update the Bundesliga table going into our second game of today's episode, which of course is a derby against RB Leipzig. But first up today, we play the second leg of our fourth qualifying round tie in the Conference League against CFR Cluj. Obviously, we should be going through off the back of that 3 0 win. In yesterday's episode, the reason we're showing you this game and not the Hanover one is I don't want to have to sit through an international break in between the games in that today's episode. So instead, you get the Cluj one. Cluj, obviously, yesterday's game, they did absolutely nothing in terms of attack. So hopefully, we can actually put some goals away and make sure we show you guys some locomotive Leipzig goals in this episode, just in case RB Leipzig do end up being quite stingy in terms of defense. Or better, I can say we are above them on the Bundesliga table at this early stage, but going into this game, we are making quite a bit of rotation because everyone in our European team who would be first choice is on a heavy workload. So we're going to take a bit of a risk in this game with that 3-0 lead that we did build up in yesterday's episode. As you can see, that usually will be our first choice team for Europe, but they are mostly on a heavy workload apart from Nino Gurk, who's an extra right wing option, and our goalkeeper and Nikola Ivisic. So because of that, we have gone out with a full rotation, including our goalkeeper, Josh Griffiths, I'll give a game to in the second league. Hopefully, I don't regret it, but we've still got some good players there in the likes of Xerxi, Bushuari, Amadori, Benedetti, and even some of our defenders like Orte. He would not be out of place in the first choice rotation, was going to be one of those players before the late signing of Andre Hurtado. So I think we should still be fine, especially with that free goal lead from yesterday's episode, and especially considering that Cluj got off no shots at all in that game, even though this one is at home, so it might be a little bit tougher, we should be in for a nice time here and give our rotation players a bit of game time where there shouldn't be too much pressure. Obviously, if things do start to go pear-shaped, we can bring on some players off of the bench, but hopefully this is time for us to make sure we make our way through safely to the league phase of the Conference League. Hopefully, we'll get our fixtures for that during the course of today's episode as well, but hopefully we can put out another good showing and make sure we hold on to that lead that we did pick up in that first leg. In yesterday's episode, looks like a very small crowd here at Cluj, and it also looks quite different for the formation they put out in yesterday's episode. This time, they are going with five at the back. I'm pretty sure yesterday they only had four at the back, so that's quite interesting. But our formation is the same, just a big change in terms of of our starting 11, but hopefully we can still put out a good performance. In this one, I've also just realized yet again, I talked over the UEFA Conference League anthem, which is exactly the same as the Europa League one, but still, it's definitely better than the Champions League one, especially when you realize what the lyrics mean in the Champions League music, but not much happening in the early stages of this game. First highlight here, just past the 10-minute mark, and we have got the ball back, Hermel, down that right-hand side. There is one area in particular where we're a lot weaker with this rotation team, because, of course, Hermel is needed for homegrown reasons, and Nino Gooks in there as well, but that's a great start. Bushuari gets on the end of that company ball, so despite the fact that it's probably our weakest drop-off in this team from our first to second in Europe down that right-hand side with Campanelli and Hermel. Some good play. Bullock actually plays this one over the Campanelli and nice ball there towards the far post. Bushuari will put that one away. That makes it 4-0 now, and surely we are through to the league phase of the Conference League, as you'd expect from a team from the Bundesliga. Shortly off the back of that, Cuckoo here does have the ball. Actually made quite a few good saves in that first league in yesterday's episode, but now we've got a four-goal buffer. Hopefully, we can at least make sure we hold on, pick up another win in this second league, because so far, no losses 
in this new season. Bushawari with a chance it takes a wicked deflection off a Cluj defender. Cuckoo can't quite save it and Bushawari after 15 minutes is already on a hat trick and thankfully the backup team is going to be more than fine it looks like to deal with some of these teams we might take on in the league phase of this competition. As I said that's a wicked deflection from the defender but Bushawari already on a hat trick we make it 2-0 on the day and 5-0 on aggregate and it's looking like this might be a bit of a walk in the park for us albeit Luke Campanelli has picked up a yellow card so that might be something we deal with going into the second half, albeit I think we'd like to keep as many of these players out there for as long as possible today to make sure we've got a fresh team heading in to that clash with RB Leipzig for the first time in this tie. Cluj do get a good shot off. That one, though, does come off the post, but shortly off the back of that, we are now down the other end with a throw -in of our own, but unfortunately can't quite find anyone inside the box, but Tom Gale at the back can deal with that danger. Now plays that one over to Racine Bullock, but that's a bit of a loose pass. Doesn't quite find Campanelli, albeit tracks back nicely. He gets it back for us, and now Hummel plays that one over to Benedetti, and now he's back on the ball here, plays that one down the left-hand side for Pablo Cesar. In the box for Nicolo Amadori, the big tall Italian. He has been on absolute fire to start this season, even though we've only used him in the rotation team games, but that's his third goal in this tie, and makes it 6-0 on aggregate, and we're absolutely Wiping the floor with these Romanians. That's a good header yet again from Amadori. All his goals have come through his head. That makes it 3-0 already in this second leg and 6-0 overall. I should really get company to ease off tackles. We'll deal with that shortly. But yet again, looks like we might be on the attack off the back of that clearance from Cuckoo in goal for Cluj. Now Benedetti on the ball in the midfield. Speeds that went out to Paolo Cesar down our left-hand side. will be a bit of a loose touch there. And Cluj might get a chance to do something, but poor pass. And Bushuari gets that one back for us. We try and play Xerxes in there over the top, but unfortunately, Cluj do win this ball back. Bit of a helter skelter highlight. And now it's Voiku who does get in behind, tries to take this one around Joshua Griffiths, but thankfully, Campanelli gets a foot on that. Now it might be a time for us to tell him to ease off tackles. We'll see if anything comes from the subsequent corner, but thankfully, that did mean that Griffiths was not tested. From that shot and thankfully still up by three goals to nil. And what has been a good performance from our rotation team so far gives me a bit of confidence that if I need to we can put out this team during the league phase games. In the conference league when we do play some teams from the lowest pot might be a chance for us to give these guys some game time and pick up some points around potentially some difficult games in the Bundesliga. But that was a very good first half I don't think even with that yellow card to Campanelli we need to make any changes at this stage will tell the guys they're doing well. Hopefully they don't ease off and we should be able to maintain our unbeaten start to the season. As we get things back underway in the second half with that 6 0 lead, as you can see, Cluj are making quite a few substitutions. Hopefully, nothing that impacts the game too much. What I really want from this game is to keep this undefeated role going, get some confidence amongst our entire squad, especially all the new signs that we did make a couple of days ago, and hopefully continue that form. In that RB Leipzig game now, Xerxes does get in behind, but fortunately to keep the ball, but in the end, good save there from Cuckoo to keep it at 3-0 on the day, 6-0 on aggregate, as I said. But we're going to try and keep these players out there for as long as possible, albeit someone like Amadori might need to rest a bit more than some other options in this team. Of course, Pimfal is not an option in the Conference League, seeing as we haven't been able to register him, but here it is Cluj who have the ball really for the longest I've had it so far in this tie. It looks like Voiku, nice ball there for Politic. Tight angle squares that for Voiku, but thankfully his header just goes over the bar. They're getting a few more chances in the second leg at home, but thankfully it is still 3-0. And just checking on player fitness, no one's that naked, so I think we'll leave things the way it is for this last half hour. Maybe do another check-in with around about 15 minutes left, but this is a game that we probably wouldn't have come back for if not for that international break off the back of that RB Leipzig game, but so be it. I don't think it's worth waiting to go and play Hanover, newly promoted, but we might bring you guys some more Bundesliga games over the next couple of episodes. Bushuari, though, will complete a hat trick that did look like a tough chance with Belong, putting a lot of pressure on him, but he tucks that one away, makes it 4-0 on the day. Now, rotation team actually putting more hurt on these guys than our first team did in the first league. That's a really nice finish there on the up on the volley from Bushuari to make it 4-0. He picks up a hat trick. Now it's time for us to just check on some player fitness late in this game. But it looks like everyone doing a decent job out there 
apart from Caminelli, also is on that yellow card. So we'll give Votchin a little bit of game time. Of course, we do have Seiko, who is playing in the Bundesliga in that guy's place. He does seem quite injury prone, which is a little bit of a concern. We'll just make sure that Votchin is not easing off tackles in the last couple of minutes of this game. But I think that might be the only sub we actually make during the entire course of this one, just to make sure our first team is fresh for that derby against RB Leipzig. But fair to say, this is going about as well as I could have hoped with putting out a full rotation team. 4-0 on the day, 7-0 on aggregate. And hopefully, as I said earlier, it does mean if we've got some tough games coming up in the Bundesliga around some Conference League games that do look a little bit easier, we can trust this backup team to do a decent job for us in European competition. Now, Cluj here looked to grab one goal in this time, much like our previous opposition. And Levski, Sofia did, but that one, another header, it just comes off the post. That's the closest they've come so far, I suppose. Also, they had a chance in the first half. It also came off the post, but Xerxes on the ball up to Hummel. Looks for Amadori. Can't quite find him. Actually, probably should have given Nino Gook some game time in this one. Actually forgot he was an option, so maybe he might get some in a similar position during the league phase of this competition. But we've got a highlight here. Deep in injury time, but we are definitely going through to the league phase of the conference. League will be our first taste proper of European football in the save and only our second season. In the Bundesliga, and as you can see, these backup players can certainly do a job for us in that competition if they need to. That highlight a complete waste of time as that one just gets put out for a goal kick, which we don't even see. But a very comprehensive 4 0 win there in that second leg, 7 0 on aggregate, and we're making our way through to the Conference League proper. So we are into the league phase of the away for Conference League for this upcoming season. In fact, right off the back of that game, we have got our fixtures and the money. We've got 2.51 million pounds for getting our way through to the league phase. So certainly, that is not an insignificant amount of money. Hopefully, we can pick up some more through wins during the league phase, albeit it won't be money like you get in competitions like the Champions League. But here are our fixtures. I haven't looked at these, so we'll see together just how tough they do look. Only six fixtures. And to be fair, I think we've got a good chance of making our way through in that top eight. Looking at some of those fixtures, early ones look very kind, taking on the likes of HJK and Poyanik, even though they are both away from home. Luzerne are a pot one team, but still, I think that should be a team we are capable of handling. Then Vozdevak, I think those first four games, very winnable. Hopefully as well, Trebs on Sporting as they come from Turkey. I think the toughest game is that last one against the Athletic Club Bilbao, but still, that looks a very kind draw for us in the Conference League. I'd like to think we can make our way through automatically to that top eight. A quick look as well. Here are all the teams involved in the competition this season, just in case you were wondering. I think my head might block a couple of them, but you'll get the gist of most of them. Some notable teams in the competition are Roma, also Lille out of league are going up a bit further. Shearer for in this, albeit not too sure how strong they are. But it looks like trying to find an English team in this competition. I'm struggling at the moment. I'm still struggling some. This actually looks like a really good chance to potentially pick up a trophy this upcoming season. Hopefully, we can do a decent job with those kind fixtures we've got during the league phase. And we are back about to take on RB Leipzig in the second game of today's episode off the back of Transfer Deadline Day. I actually didn't take part in Deadline Day for once because I didn't feel like we needed to do anything. But to be fair, it didn't actually make the day take any less time. So it's probably not something that was worthwhile doing. But RB Leipzig did do some business. I suspect this was to replace Al Wahi, of course. They sold to Bayern Munich all the way back in January in that mid-season transfer window. They have signed, I can actually see them on this team sheet, which is a little bit annoying, but we'll go over and have a look at their transfer history. And you can see that they have spent £69 million on Dean Martin from Nottingham Forest. To be fair, if I had the money, I think I would try and sign this guy. He looks very good, does the former Hibernian player as well. He looks like a very good replacement for Ali Wahi. So that's someone to definitely keep an eye out in this upcoming clash. But so far, RB Leipzig, we have a mixed start. To the Bundesliga, they did beat Sundhouse on the opening day, 3-2 away from home, albeit did get a red card in that game, so we're a little bit lucky, and then off the back of that, did suffer a 1-0 defeat at home to Hoffenheim, so so far those guys are down in the bottom half of the table, albeit lots of teams with us playing on a Sunday have already played their third match, we have not coming off the back of that European clash with CFR Cluj, also Ange might be under a bit of pressure 
to keep his job if we can beat him in this game. So a lot of incentive there for me to try and get one over on him, especially off the back of what he's done to me over on Twitch so far this year. But it's time to get stuck in to our second Bundesliga game on camera of this season and win here would see us get back inside of a European spot. A loss in RB Leipzig would jump above us into one of those. As you can see, Wolfsburg actually the team who have got off to a very good start this season, including on the last match day, they picked up a win over Bayern Munich. So that is interesting. Wolfsburg, we play them and only a couple of games time, that might be one we come back for in tomorrow's episode. Unfortunately, despite all that rest in that previous game, still having to make a few changes for this game defensively, just one, Paolo Caesar comes in for Ryan because Ryan, on a heavy workload, that injury susceptibility a little bit higher than I would like. So Caesar keeps his place from that previous game. Otherwise, back to first choice in terms of midfield, Benedetti over Escobar because he is always quite injury prone, especially at the moment. And Alban Krasnicki comes in for Michael Mastis, another player who is quite injury prone. And Krasnicki is quite fresh, not being registered for the conference league, but apart from that, we are back to our full strength lineup. All those other players on a heavy match load aren't too injury prone, so hopefully they'll get through this last game before a two-week gap for an international break. And hopefully we can pick up a win over RB Leipzig for the first time since we played them for the first time in that second round of the DFB Pockel last season. Interesting to see there, Daniel Cueto is a little bit unprehensive as Kiwior is physically stronger than him. Hopefully he can still put out a good performance otherwise. Joshua Zerxi is a very good option on the bench for us, but obviously this is going to be a quite good team, albeit I look at that Leipzig lineup and still can't quite see their new signing. So thankfully, we might have got away with not facing him in this game, so they might still be a bit weak until Dean Martin does show up. But we'll pump the guys up here by saying these matches matter to our fans, albeit still a few people here. We are still trying to win over, but thankfully, just the pump fist, and I trust you to make the difference is going to work with them and hopefully we can stay unbeaten in the season so far and maybe even pick up a win in the derby and maybe get Ange sick that's always good off the back of my twitch save we've been following him around so far he's been at Celtic and then PSG while I've been at St Mirren and Montpellier so it's been a little bit tough for me over there but there are RB Leipzig Carvalho up front which is a very interesting option instead of Dean Martin didn't think he had any injuries, but as I said before, a win here will get us back inside of a European spot. We'll get straight into the action here, and hopefully, despite the fact not putting out quite the team I would want for this game, we can still put out a good performance and at least stay unbeaten going into that first international break of the season, and hopefully that gives our guys lots of confidence going into the rest of the season. As I said, coming up soon, we take on Wolfsburg, who so far are the best team in the Bundesliga, albeit no doubt Bayern Munich will get back on track soon. White there was on the ball and couldn't pick out someone down our right-hand side. Now Carvalho does get in behind. He chips Ivazic. It's a poor start. Look like there. We get a chance on the attack ourselves. But poor pass from our striker and Matt White. We had lots of space down that right-hand side. He couldn't quite find it. Should have tried to loop that one over the top to Sicker. Poor option. Unfortunately, Comedio can't quite deal with the danger. Of the former Liverpool men and Fabio Carvalho, two former Liverpool men there, and Carvalho does win that battle. And we go down 1 0 just shy of the 15 minute mark. So, not a great start for us there. Up until that point, was looking quite promising, but now RB Leipzig do start to get on the front for a little bit more. Now, White has picked up a yellow card, maybe will bring on the difference maker in Amadori during the second half. But Zobazlai is on the ball, plays it up to Espandola, thankfully, Hitado. Deals with that danger. Nice ball out there looking for Anhala. Unfortunately, can't quite find him now. And Kunku over the top for Zobazai. But thankfully, that one goes just over the bar. Still 1-0 to RB Leipzig. And what has been a bit of a rough start to this game for us. Now they have a corner here at the 30-minute mark. Hopefully, we can demand more off the back of this and start to get on the front foot a bit more. Camillo does win that race before. I think that might have been Bardio. But now back in there for Kiwiola. He scores that with his feet. And RB Leipzig are kind of bashing us here at home. That's not a good effort from us here so far, it's fair to say, and hopefully we can turn this around in the second half at least, but not a good start here. Gvardiol did go in for that one. It was headed away from Camillo, but then it finds its way back in there through Nkunku to Kiwiro. It's a nice finish from the center back and not a good start, but thankfully off the back of that demand more, there is a highlight from the restart. Hitaro plays this one forward to Sika back there 
to Hurtado, but maybe time for a reality check here for our guys and too long on the ball here from our young center back. Carvalho does get inside the box. Tight angle. Can we stop them playing this one? Into the mix. So we can't. David Flatisse puts that one away. 3-0 down. I think Ange might be keeping his job, which makes me sad. Oh, so sad. Can't get away from him. Just a nightmare. But good work here from RB Leipzig. Carvalho off the back of that poor touch from Hurtado. That was some of his worst work so far. And a block Leipzig jersey and finds its way to Fratesi. Unfortunately, Benedetti can't quite get to it before he does. And we don't get a chance here to actually try and wind the boys up before the next highlight. But it isn't a good area of the pitch for a throw. And hopefully we can grab a goal back at least. Krasnicki will grab one with his head now. Hopefully we can encourage the guys and maybe get this one down to a one goal deficit. At least we've actually scored a goal in this game with one of the few chances we've had so far. Polo sees it with the throw and hello back there to Cesar, takes his time on the ball in there for Benedetti, takes a few touches at the far post, somehow Krasnicki does win that one, gets through the hands of Thicken, and we get it back to a two goal deficit, hopefully we can find a way to reduce the gap a bit more before half time, we'll be at now a corner down the other end, and Zobberslai goes quite close there, thankfully that one does come off the post, but RB Leipzig well and truly on the front foot so far in this game. Actually quite similar to the game we played against Fortuna Dusseldorf, apart from the fact that RB Leipzig are actually putting the ball in the back of the net, but that was a very poor first half, especially defensively. That left-hand side of defense in particular, really struggling, and our attack as well isn't going too well, so it might be time for us here to make quite a few subs to try and turn this one around. That left-hand side of defense, as I said, is struggling, so Ote will come on for Comedio also, Ryan will give him some game time. Probably should have started him. Blommy is on a yellow card, so we'll bring on Manuel in his place. And then three of our front four really struggling as well, which does make me wonder if I should actually leave Blommy out there and make those changes and attack. Hopefully that doesn't prove too costly a ball wing midfielder on a yellow card, but probably won't hurt taking off the players who are on poor ratings. So we'll bring on Amadori Bushuari off the back of that hat trick in the Cluj game, and also Xerxes, who got a hat trick in the cup game that we played in the first round of the DFB Pockets. So all five subs they used at half time, a little bit risky, but hopefully it might pay off. And we can get on the front foot just a little bit more in this upcoming second half. A big risk there making all five substitutions. We're going to have to tell the boys that we're just not being good enough in this game so far, and hopefully we get a bit of a response. As I said, a little bit concerned about leaving Blomaye out there on a yellow card in particular in that ball wing midfielder position, but hopefully off the back of getting a goal back late in that first half, we can grab one here nice and early in the second. I see now Ryan's picked up a yellow card at left back. Thankfully, it's a position we can actually get someone to ease off tackles, albeit not ideal in defense when you are 3-1 down, but so far kicking the ball nicely here from this first highlight of the second half. Krasnicki gets in behind, having a good game so far. Amadori with his head this time, just puts that one wide. That was a big chance. If he was in the Cluj form, I think that one might have hit the target, but only a few minutes later, there is another attack. Hopefully, we can still keep the ball here. Amadori links up with Ryan. Now, Benedetti starts to make his way infield, picks out Xerxes, looks to play that one over the top for Krasnicki, but Amadori, nice ball through there for Bushawari. He'll grab a goal, and we are right back in this one. Continues his form from that Cluj game where he picked up a hat trick, and that makes it 3 2. And RRB Leipzig gonna blow a 3 0 lead. That would be something special, especially with Ange under pressure. Vardiol with a bit of a poor hitter there into Amadori, and Bushawari flicking gets a touch on that. Thankfully, still finds its way into the back of the net. And hopefully, we can still find a way back into this game, especially now only being down by one goal. As we enter the last half hour, Benedetti is down to a red heart, but of course, we've already used all of our substitutions. Hopefully, we continue this momentum from late in the first half and can grab a third goal, but maybe might need to try what we did late in that Cluj game yesterday when we were looking for an advantage going in to that away lead and go just a little bit more attacking with our player roles, and I think. Now might be the time to do that. We're going to chuck Ryan onto attack. Also, chuck Krasnicki onto attack and go attacking and also tell our guys to maybe go a bit wider and be a bit more expressive. And we'll see if that can help us grab an equalizer inside the last 10 minutes of this game. Unfortunately, just feels like things might have slowed down off the back 
of grabbing that goal back with still a half hour left, but hopefully we can pinch one here and really potentially put Ange under pressure, even if it is just to draw one more encouraged. But unfortunately, I think a poor start in this game might prove costly. We're into the last minute. It's not going to happen. We suffer our first defeat of the season, albeit we tried to make that one very interesting at the end. Unfortunately, off the back of scoring that second goal, we did kind of fall into a bit of a low, but big response early in that second half, thankfully, got a goal through Bushawari to make it 3-2. But unfortunately, those early goals to Carvalho, Kiwiora, and Fratesi, some of those through poor mistakes, poor pass from White for that first goal. And then also, a bit too long on the ball from Hurtado for that Kiwiora goal. And it's a 3-2 loss of game, which really, if we didn't make those mistakes, we might have been in with a chance. But RB Leipzig, far too clinical in front of goal. And for now, it does mean we will slip out of a European spot on the Bundesliga table, but thankfully still a long way to go, unlucky, I can actually tell them now they gave a bit of effort, especially off the back of going 3-0 down, but just can't make starts like those against my other better teams in the division. I think we'll say we need to watch that match back with a clearest perspective, and hopefully we'll learn from that if we actually lost 3-0, I think. We might have just gone with a bit more of a harsh response to that one. Also, we did have, of course, Votchin on the bench, but he is still very injury prone. That is not something that I'm enjoying here so far. With our new signing, hopefully we'll get him back to full strength by the time that we do make our way through to our first league phase game of the Conference League. But unfortunately, it's our first defeat of the season, albeit we tried to come back, but eventually lose 3-2 to RB Leipzig in the derby. And back in the inbox right off the back of that second game of today's episode. As I said off the back of that game, poor start did cost us. We got it back to 3-2, but unfortunately couldn't get anything more in the last half hour of that game. Maybe should have just started with my best choice 11 anyway. Some of those players that we did bring in did not do a good job, but also some of our first choice players also did not go too well. Maybe need to keep the likes of Amadori in the team in particular. And as I showed you before, we are now just outside of a European spot on the Bundesliga table, but still a long way to go. Only played three games in the league with some of our attention so far this season having been on the Conference League qualifiers, which thankfully we are now through to the league phase in. But that will do it for today's episode. Nothing happened on deadline day, but did a little bit of business before then and also made our way through to the league phase of the Conference League before that loss to RB Leipzig. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow as i said we take on wolfsburg in the not too distant future off the back of the international break i think that's a game that could be a bit interesting at home and we might come back off the back of that and take on cologne in the bundesliga as i said earlier i think those first couple of games in the conference league do look a little bit easy, so maybe we'll just park the Conference League for a little while until some tougher looking games do come up, so I think we'll come back tomorrow and start to focus a little bit more on the domestic competitions. Two games in the Bundesliga, we take on top of the table Wolfsburg and also FC Cologne away from home, so until then, thank you very much for watching, keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Don't know how I ended up, I ended up to last, oh, oh, oh. Sink through the deep end, hurt and defeated, oh, oh.